hello guys and welcome to another video on dental material so i am lakshmi jain so in the previous video we discussed about rigid impression materials then i explained in detail about the various aspects you should know about impression compound so now let's move on to the next topic which is zinc oxide eugenol impression paste now zinc oxide and eugenol are two materials which are widely used in dentistry so in powder form they are used as temporary restorative material for either a caries excavated tooth or a tooth that has undergone root canal therapy in the paste form which is the topic of interest for today's video this is most commonly used as an impression material especially in edentulous mouth so now uh, what is this zinc oxide eugenol paste so it is an impression material which is rigid and is an irreversible type unlike agar material now what all are the uses of such a material so it can be used as a secondary impression for edentulous or your complete denture then it can be used for bite registration in before trial to know what the occlusion is it can be used to reline a complete denture so it's a temporary relining material so in cases where the denture becomes loose and a material is applied on the tissue surface to facilitate better fit so it can be used for such a purpose then again periodontal pack so i'll tell you in detail what it is in the end of this discussion so now uh, the ada specification number which is recognized for this particular material is number 60 so you should know these ada specification numbers for neat exam purposes so are there any different types of this material so when you check like uh, look at all the exhaustive literature present in the textbook given by manapalli they have mentioned two types of the zinc oxide eugenol impression paste the first type is hard type and the type two soft so it is based on the consistency of this material so now what all are the composition or what does this impression paste contain so it is composed of a two paste system one is a base paste and the second one is accelerator or the catalyst or the reactor paste so now in the base paste you have zinc oxide eugenol sorry zinc oxide which is a majority major component about 87 percentage and then vegetable or mineral oil now the zinc oxide that is present should be finely divided and it should contain very small amount of water if more amount of water is present it may undergo the setting reaction now the next component is the vegetable or the mineral oil which is about 13 percentage now the purpose of this is to act as a plasticizer that is it is going to give it the ability to flow or become vis like reduce the viscosity it also helps in masking the effect of the eugenol as a tissue irritant now moving on to the accelerator piece oil of clove or eugenol is a material that is reacting with the zinc oxide to give the final product now in few cases it has a more an irritant nature it is replaced by other agents which are less irritating now again gum or polymerized rosin so this actually acts as an accelerant and also helps in improving the homogeneous nature or the homogeneity of the mixed product then fillers are mainly added to any material for increasing the strength that is when filler content is increased the material becomes more strong now canolin again acts as a filler material then resin is balsam again that also acts as a uh, in, in allowing it to reduce its viscosity that it allows the material to flow properly for any material impression material uh, adequate flow is required so that it records the details now another accelerator is calcium chloride which along with coloring pigments composes about 5% now in addition to calcium chloride you can use other agents also like zinc acetate you can use primary alcohol or glacial acetic acid but commonly or traditionally calcium chloride is added as a accelerant so now let us see how the setting reaction is going to happen for the zinc oxide eugenol zinc oxide is going to react with water molecule to form the zinc hydroxide 
Now, this zinc hydroxide will further react with eugenol to form zinc eugenolate and water molecule. Here, this zinc hydroxide is the base and eugenol is the acid. We know that base and acid will react together to form salt which is zinc eugenolate, the final such product. Now, what all are the properties of zinc oxide eugenol that you should know? The first and the foremost is going to be about the working time. So, it should have sufficient working time to allow mixing, loading and sealing of the impression material. If it has very short setting time, we will be not able to work it in a way that you want to do it. Next is going to be the setting time. So, now setting time actually is dependent upon the particle size. Now, when the size of zinc oxide is small or if it is non-coated it will take less there will be less setting time it will set faster now the you can also try to vary the length of the base and accelerator paste again it is not recommended because when you alter the paste length the setting time working time it's all the other properties are going to become half a hard and you will have to recalibrate it to understand how it's going to work Next is going to be mixing time. So, if you increase the mixing time, the setting time is also going to get increased. Now, when the atmospheric pressure is high and when there is humidity, so these two conditions individually or together can also help in increasing the setting time. Again, temperature. So, if you cool the glass slab and you mix in it, the setting time is going to be increased. Now, Again, if you're going to heat it up and you're going to mix it, then it's going to set faster. So, for the type 1 and type 2, there is an initial setting time which refers to the period from mixing till it forms a string like material. So, it's like the time till you should stop mixing it. So, uh, the impression should be set uh, like before it's, it shows initial setting, the impression should be loaded into the oral cavity. So, it's around 3 to 6 for both the types of material and the final setting time is when the material fails to show a depression or penetration of more than 0.2 mm when you put a lead ball on top of it. Like when you check the hardness thing, it should not allow it to penetrate for more than 2.2 millimeters. So, it's 10 for the type 1 and 15 for the type 2 material. So, flow of a material. So, I told you an impression material should have adequate flow so that we can record the uh, structures with accuracy. So, if it is too thick, it's going to compress the tissue and you're not going to get it recorded properly. On the other hand, if it is thin enough, it's not going to cause any distortion and you will get a good detailed reproduction that is required by this material. Now, it has the ability to resist distortion and fracture, but again, because of human errors, it may tend to chip off. So, you should be very careful when you're handling this material. Now, the compressive strength of this particular material is around 7 megapascal. Next, eugenol has a problem with wire compatibility. In some people, it's going to cause severe burning sensation as it's a tissue irritant. So, in such cases, a non-eugenol paste needs to be substituted. So, now, how are you going to mix this material? So, you have to take a glass slab. So, you should either put a proper sheet, parchment sheet on it or you can just put it directly also. So, you have to Put the reactor and the accelerant paste of equal length. Get your spatula ready. You have to start mixing it in a circular motion, ensuring and you should pack it in such a way that whatever unmixed material is left in the bottom, it's scraped off, what on top and is mixed well. It should be evenly mixed and it, you should make sure when you touch it with the spatula, there are some strings that are coming up on top. So then you just scrape it off. Put it on your special tray, keep it in the oral cavity and get a good impression. So, a small tip. So, some it has a mixing time of only one minute. So, when you are a student and you are learning how to mix it properly, the one minute is not going to be enough for you to finish mixing. So, in such a case, you can just put a little bit of Vaseline or petroleum jelly before mixing 
and incorporate it in the mix. It's not going to affect the integrity of the material at all. It's just going to allow a little bit of mixing time for you. So it just allows additional one or one and a half minute mixing time. So you can just mix it properly and load it up. So but again, this is going to increase the setting time also. So you'd have to calibrate it accordingly. So finally, you're going to get a proper secondary impression. So how are you going to disinfect such an impression? So like I told you in the previous video, you should either disinfect the impression or the car should be disinfected. Especially when you're facing a pandemic, such a time, the disinfection becomes one of the important uh, parameters that you have to take care of when you're running a dental setup or you're a dental student or you're a practicing dentist or even a lab technician. So 2% of glutaraldehyde is actually used for disinfecting impression. So two methods are there. You can either immerse it in the solution, rinse it and then again keep it out or you can just spray the disinfectant. So among these two, for zinc oxide eugenol paste, this immersion or the rinsing type is the better one. So now what all are the advantages? So since uh, this material uh, has sufficient strength or it's a rigid material, even if there is any minor under extension of the tray, the material can hold itself for such a limited position that it doesn't fall off and it will record that area also. Now it, ha it has a good working time so it will allow us to finish the secondary impression. Then the consistency of the setting of the mouth can be checked repeatedly by poking or probing with when it's kept in the oral cavity without undergoing any deformation. Or if you're not confident about checking it within the mouth, you can just keep a, a part, a little bit of this material, check the consistency with your hand and when you feel it's of correct consistency, it's not, it's just powdering off, you can just take it off from the oral cavity. Now it has good flow and hence gives a good reproduction of detail like I explained. Then it does not stick to the car. So you don't need special like Vaseline or anything that should be put or any transparent material that should be kept between the tray or then the impression and the cast material to ensure it comes off without breaking. Now minor defects can be corrected easily. So you don't have to worry if there is small air bubble or some small detail that's not recorded. You don't have to scrape off the full thing. But if larger areas are defective, you'll have to scrape it up. But smaller areas can be corrected. Now, anything with advantages or anything that you're going to use is going to have some disadvantages. Likewise, with zinc oxide eugenol, for impression, you can't use your normal stock tray. You are going to need a special tray, especially acrylic tray that is used for taking the secondary impression. Another problem is that this material has a tendency to stick to the tissue. Then eugenol, like I told, is an irritant and causes burning sensation. And since this material is not that flexible, like you see with the elastomeric impression material, that in cases where there is a dentulous personal, when there is severe undercuts, you cannot use this material as it may just break off or tear in the areas where there is undercut or all the interproximal areas. So now there are certain variations that you should know. So first is a periodontal pack. So following any uh, treatment, gingivoplasty or any periodontal surgery, when you're not that confident about the patient being able to retain the suture or you're not sure it's gonna, not going to heal properly, you can just give a zinc oxide eugenol pack. That is a surgical pack which is kept off of the surgery area. So it allows the suture to be held in place, it's going to just block off all the moisture, everything from the outer surface from coming in contact to the wood and also it's going to fa faster or it's just going to speed up the healing process. So this is a periodontal pack. Next non-eugenol impression paste. So I told that this eugenol is irritating. So they made a non-eugenol containing material which is less irritant, works on the same principle, same mixing, same property without the burning problem uh, that you face with eugenol. Final is the bite registration. So most commonly you tend to use elastomeric impression materials or wax, modeling wax for this purpose but eugenol can also be used for doing the bite registration to record the occlusion. If you have any queries or any doubts, anything you need clarification on, please feel free to contact us in our Instagram page. 
so it's cracking.den underscore edu dot redefine so hope you're all doing fine at home please don't forget to like share our video and if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe to our channel so we can make more videos like this and reach it to you